Hello, welcome at DevOps 2018. I'm here with an interview with uh, Erin Coughlin. She works for Google, um, and she's really cool, doing cool stuff with, uh, with Angular. Um, yeah. You did a talk on Angular, right? Yeah, so... Please introduce yourself. <laughs> uh, yeah, so he said, um, my name is Aaron. Aaron. Uh, I presented last night, actually, uh, on upgrading to Angular uh, without using like ng upgrades, so more of like Angular elements or custom elements for that process. Yeah, yeah. And at Google, what do you do at Google? Uh, yeah, so at Google, I work on the Google Marketing Platform, which is a large enterprise application for advertisers and marketers. Uh, combines like 13 different products. And then the other product is like this common header, common library throughout yeah, yeah. all of this. Yeah, like a common component library. Yeah, the very difficult component library. Uh, we have like about 200,000 lines of code uh, across all of our like main core products and everything. So. Fairly large application. That's a big header. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so you have quite some experience then with, how do you say it, building an enterprise app with Angular. Yeah. Uh, and I suppose it took a long time, so I suppose there's multiple versions of Angular in there. Yep, we <laughs> started actually before we even used AngularJS, so like an internal framework we built. We then migrated that to AngularJS. Uh, some of our products are still in the middle of doing it. Yeah. And then we're in the middle of still migrating further to Angular. Has to be annoying, right? Having all these versions at the same time. Yeah, you have like this combination of what versions you want to use. So like anything new we write, always in Angular. We don't, we'd ever go back to the old ones. Yeah. But stuff we haven't touched in five years, it just stays in Angular JS. It stays in whatever that fr other initial framework is. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. No, no need touching it basically. Yeah. Unless it might be the last one, then you might take the take the pain to do it, but. Just yeah. to get rid of it. <laughs> yeah, so at some point, uh, the way we migrate is if you fix a bug or if you fix, like, add a feature request, you just migrate the page to Angular. Yeah. Uh, and it's in this incremental process from old to new. And we're going to have this combination of old and new for potentially a long time. Yeah. So I suppose you have some kind of micro front end, micro service approach, uh, right? I mean, if you have to rewrite, it has to happen quite quickly. Yeah, so we have, I guess, two two like, main applications. So that homepage, that Google marketing platform, we started using ng upgrade uh, yep. about two years ago. So very early versions of ng upgrade. Yep. And we have like a dual router between UI router and this Angular router. So it tends to be pretty common uh, in the community with like this dual router situation. Yeah, especially in the Angular 1 version, right? Because then the router was really limited and you had to almost always need to use the UI router. Yeah. Um, so I mean, I, mean I, I used it myself, so. <laughs> Yeah. I can easily understand that many people really want to keep doing that. Uh, yeah, they're all going down the same path of having both versions running at the same time. Uh, we didn't actually have the flexibility of that for the component library. Yeah, so true. Yeah. Component library is a little bit special in that it is not just AngularJS. It's also Polymer. It's also Angular Dart. Uh, we have some Google Web Toolkit in there, uh, so tons and tons of frameworks. Yep. And so we had to find a brand new approach for how we migrate our component library, the shared header, uh, across all of our products. And then having these components as generic components across the frameworks uh, should make it really easy to, to migrate, right? Because the, many of the, of the difficult things have been done already. Yeah, so we have switched to like using these custom elements using Angular elements. So we rewrite it in Angular, we put it in an Angular element, custom element, and then we can stick it anywhere we want. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. So we have the more freedom, more flexibility, and hopefully it doesn't matter that there are five different versions yeah, exactly. on the page. But the five versions, I suppose, the core behind it is not five versions. It's one version of one base component, and you have some kind of way of not repeating yourself, I suppose. Yeah, a lot of what we end up writing for like services and things are actually framework agnostic. So they aren't Angular, they aren't Angular JS. It's just plain JavaScript, yep. uh, web standards. And then we just kind of bundle it up into all these different frameworks. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then you have this adapter or something to basically make it usable in, in, this, in this framework context. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we have like, I guess my biz biggest passion on this is I don't want the changes to be visible to anyone else. Um, I want to make it really easy. I want to make sure that they can implement the new stuff without having to worry about all this complexity. Oh yeah, yeah. And so we hide some of that complexity from the end user, from the other developers on the team trying to move forward and implement it. Yep. And by building these common inf 
common infrastructure across all these products, we can move a lot faster. Uh, yeah, the things like theming and it, uh, like the, the base logic of the components is already there. Yeah. And all you have to do is the specific stuff for that page, that module, that screen, that kind yeah. of thing. And theming is one of the interesting ones too. Yeah. Uh, so our UX designers and our marketers decided every product was a different color. So ah. we have blue products, we have red products, uh, we have some yellow products, and every single one of those has this different theme. So we have to figure out the ways to theme them differently while still using this common yeah. infrastructure. But that's easy, right? Just use a global style with important and then you're, you're done, <laughs> right? <laughs> uh, except for then sometimes you have to override it. Yeah. So uh, we use Angular Material and that Ooh. has a lot of theming built in. Uh, we can specify a theme per product at the root of our application and then just like fill, fills out across everything. Yeah. And then at build time you actually generate a new app, I suppose then? Like a static app with a new uh, theme? Or? It, oh, I'm trying to remember actually. I think the yeah the themes are all developed in whatever ones we specify the constants they just they're constants in SAS so yep. when we specify it and it gets built together we fill them in on all the spots yeah like a SAS variable somewhere yep. and so. basically a real simple infrastructure that that gets the job done then yeah exactly oh, cool and the components that those are web components right yeah so we're also in the middle of migrating that one uh, we've. We're still writing in Angular. Uh, we like the Angular infrastructure, especially for internationalization, uh, Angular material components with accessibility. Um, a lot of these enterprise requirements, they've already handled most of it for us. Yeah. Uh, so we're using Angular as the base, but then we wrap it and package it in the custom elements. Okay, cool. And how is that going? Is, that, is it like easy to use? Is it fast, cross-browser? Uh, yeah, so custom elements work in every browser. There's polyfills for IE, so it still works in our case. So we support yep. current and latest of every browser. And then for for like how fast it is, we still have to rewrite it. Like at some point you have to rewrite it to Angular. It used to be an Angular JS. Rewriting it uh, doesn't take much time. Yep. Uh, well, I guess depending on the complexity, but actually putting it back into Angular JS is about six lines of code. So ah, okay. So basically it's not completely ideal, but at least it's a way to gradually go to the ideal situation. Yeah, we can incrementally move forward to Angular and the platform we want to use, and we can do it in this reusable way. Yeah, and is this something that, that for example, I can do as a, as a non-Googler? Uh, do I have accessibility to everything? Uh, yeah, uh, so Angular elements, they're actually built into the Angular framework, so there's a module Angular slash elements. You can use that today yeah. and build these web components. And then the second part of it is I built a wrapper. It's called Create NG1 Wrapper. Uh, it's mm -hmm. available on my GitHub page and also on NPM. And you can install that and start using the wrapper from the custom elements to AngularJS. So the ah, okay. six lines of code I write, you can also write. Ah, okay. Or I can get it from GitHub. Or, yeah, <laughs> or it's on GitHub. <laughs> okay, and you also use that in your project then? Yeah, we're using it right now uh, for specific, like a lot of icons. So we're trying to figure out how this works at a lot of scale, and we're trying to identify all of the edge cases in it, so yeah. if these applications are big, how do we improve load, how do we not hurt, hurt performance, and we're kind of doing that step by step. Yeah, so basically you're like this role model for other applications that, that also want to migrate. We right? hope I mean, so. you can see it that way. <laughs> yeah, we hope to help a lot of other teams migrate. So across all of our products, there's a lot of teams on AngularJS, yeah. and some may want to migrate, some may not want to migrate, and we want to help, if they do, make it a lot easier. Yeah, because it's still costly, but at least you can ease the pain and spread it out gradually over time. Uh, yeah, so they can write the new stuff in the new framework, leave the old stuff alone. Uh, yeah. And I think that tends to be the best approach. So. And do you think there are other like requirements on the AngularJS way of working that you have uh, You have to be on 1.7, write everything with components, no scope inheritance, blah, 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 blah. Is that are there requirements to, to do this kind of thing? Yeah, so inside Google we have one version of Angular, uh, and that one or in, one version of Angular JS as well. So all of our applications are on the same version. So we kind of avoid that problem of like 1.5 versus 1.6 versus 1.7. Uh, when we write our own components, a while ago we switched them all from the Angular JS directives to Angular JS components, and then we started using more of Angular style, like Angular styles, where we all everything's inputs outputs. Yep. We got rid of a lot of the two-way data binding, uh, which doesn't transfer over as well. And we actually started. We wrote our own like types and TypeScript for on init, on, like on changes, and all of the different lifecycle hooks. So we can actually write our classes where it's implements on init, yep. which is yep. our on init, not the Angular one. 
Uh, yeah, exactly. So you have to do some work to like, get like up to par on like your, your coding style and your architecture, and if you're there, then there's no reason not to upgrade. Yeah, and we actually started by upgrading the TypeScript. So oh, yeah. uh, most teams, I think, with Angular JS are writing it in JavaScript. Uh, it's where it was initially. And we actually went through and just rewrote everything. Uh, yeah. Turned off all of our builds, all of our tests for like a week, and then the 12 people on our team, like the only thing we did was upgrade. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Sold it to management, like we have to do this. <laughs> this is like this initial step, stop the world kind of thing, and then we can start gradually proceeding. Even before Angular, yeah. So we were talking a lot about the developer productivity on that one, uh, yeah. having type com like type completion, like, and actually we caught a lot of bugs when we went to do that migration. So like all of our enums we had, they started being type checked and we're like, oh shoot, we like temp like we typed it wrong. Yeah, yeah, uh, and you didn't notice, but uh, there might have been a production bug there. Yeah, <laughs> and we looked at it, we're like, oh, thank, like good thing we didn't get paged for that, like we weren't woken up in the middle of the night because yeah, exactly. of these issues. Yeah. So we migrated to TypeScript, got all of that in place, and then it was a lot easier migration from Angular JS type with TypeScript to Angular with TypeScript. We're now using the same language, and we started using the components, so same of the same like core ideas yep. uh, between the two. Ah, cool. So basically, to put it bluntly, there's actually no re reason not to upgrade. You get better type completion, you fix bugs. Um, it does cost a little bit of money up front, and then like you have to pay, of course, but. Yeah. It just gets better from there, and it is doable. That's, I think, the, the translation of what I hear. Yeah, and at least for TypeScript, like, it's very, very easy. Um, there's different tools that'll help you along the way. Uh, we specifically use like, a closure-style JavaScript, so we had some of the types already in place. And so it was a little bit easier where we could use the types and like, infer what the TypeScript ones yep. were. Uh, it's a little bit more difficult for some of the teams without types in their JavaScript because they have to go through and figure out what is like a Boolean, what is a number. Uh, but once they do it, it makes them more like sane and from our point of view, is like safer code. Uh, we were less worried about it just breaking. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool, and any last thing? What would you say to people who are still in Angular JS yeah. uh, that as a personally want to migrate but they're not allowed or whatever? What, what's the last suggestion you would give to them? Yeah, so. I would probably say what our team is doing right now is if you have any new features or fixing any bugs, just take the time to migrate it. Uh, build it into the cost of developing these new features and you can have like an incremental migration, use some of the new components, use some TypeScript, and eventually make your way to the future of Angular. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, thank you so Enjoy much. the conference. Um, enjoy your time in Belgium. Thank you. And uh, to everybody watching, um, Please watch Aaron's talk about uh, migrating.